hey guys welcome back to my channel so good to be here today i'm back with another reaction to comedy louis ck roasting black people for eight minutes i can't wait to check this out so let's dive right into it here's a joke why did the chicken cross the road because there was a black guy walking behind him and he was he was nervous he was new to the city this chicken and he was like i feel like he's following me but i'm not sure so then he thought maybe if i cross the road then if he crossed the road, he's definitely falling. So he crossed the road, and the black guy went home. He's living his life. And the chicken Aww. was like, I'm such a racist. Yeah, and he definitely felt, felt bad. <laughs> About a month later, a black guy ate the chicken. A uh, different black guy. I'm just telling you what happened. By the way, don't be upset, because this is not a racist joke. This joke is not racist. The chicken was racist. The chicken was definitely racist. But that's chickens. Chickens are very closed down and suspicious and prejudiced. You kind of can't blame them considering that their species murder rate is 100%. That's what chickens Absolutely. are like. I'm watch out. There's always excuses for racism, you know? Like, I met this guy from the South and he was really racist. And I asked his friend, why is he like that? And his friend goes, oh, well, he was born on a farm. <laughs> What kind of farm was that, you know? <laughs> Maybe the animals were racist, uh -huh. you know? He's walking around the animals are like, Jews! <laughs> Jews! Black! Black! It's crazy. <laughs> Seriously. Jews! <laughs> so I have mild racism. It's benign, it's not aggressive. It's not even negative racism, it's mild racism. I'll give you an example, okay? Like, see, like if I go uh, to a, a pizza place I've never been to before, and it's run by four black women, I'll go like, uh, hmm. See, it's very mild. It's extremely mild racism. I'll it's mild, right? That. Yeah, right. Yeah. You don't usually see that, four black women run pizza places. Unless, unless it's called Four Black Girls Pizza or something like that, like that's the whole point of the place. I do yes. know where the, where the term kite came from, by the way. Ah, derogatory term it's for the, Jewish yes, people. I do, where that I, I do know where that came from. Where? It is when, they, when people used to come uh, over on the, uh, you know, in the ships that, on Ellis Island, mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot of people couldn't write English. So they used to make their mark, and the Jews' mark was a circle. And uh, the circle is called Keikel. So that's what they were just shorting it to Kike. The oh. guys oh, coming yeah? in and say, here's another Kike once they've seen the, the, the circle. You know where Stamp. nigger came from originally? <laughs> there was some black guy being a nigger. <laughs> so they called him a nigger. That's crazy. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he was being a real nigger. He said, what a nigger. And that's where it started. It just was a, it was a feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another example of mild racism. If I say I'm in a hospital and the doctor comes in to treat me and the doctor's from China or India, I'll think, well, good, good. <laughs> good, more of that, why not? <laughs> it's very mild racism. Here's another example. If I'm in a gas station late at night and uh, a, young, a young man comes in wearing a hooded sweatshirt, if he's white, I'll think, oh, he's an athlete. If he's black, unless he has a big smile on his face, then I become mildly racist, and this is what I think. I think, that's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing's going to happen. No, of course not. Talking I'm to fine. yourself, I yeah. I think that for a second. But people are too afraid of Harlem, you know? Like, everybody, when you move to New York, they, they say, oh, you, you can't go to Harlem, because as soon as you get there, they kill you. I hear a lot about how long. <laughs> no, I've been there too. you arrive, they stab you in the face. Uh -huh. Seriously. <laughs> you just get how would that ever happen? Too, but I've been to Harlem, and people there, they have a lot of stuff to do. You know, they're busy. They're not just standing around waiting for lost white people to kill all day. <laughs> I do this. You know? <laughs> right outside a subway entrance, you go, come on, come on! I just want to say, I'm not trying to say that if you're white, you can't complain. Right. I'm just saying that if you're black, you get to complain more. Right. right. Because <laughs> you can't. There you go. Oh, God, don't tell the this band. This guy is a natural. <laughs> yeah. That's the band. Because yeah, 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 yeah. you can't. You can't. That's right. You can't take people's like 
historical context away from them. And right. everybody wants us to. Like, white people are always like, come on, it wasn't us. Like, they want black people to forget <laughs> everything. Like, every year, white people add 100 years to how long ago slavery was. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard educated white people say slavery was 400 years ago. <laughs> no, it very wasn't. <laughs> it was 140 years ago. That's two 70-year-old ladies living and dying back to back. <laughs> That's how recently <laughs> you could buy a guy. That's it. And it's not like slavery ended and then everything has been amazing. <laughs> like it just. Oh, I'm glad that's over. Oh yeah, it just ended like a clean <laughs> where you don't have to wipe. Just boom, and then it's just been parades and presents ever right. since. Right, exactly. You gotta. You gotta remember that if you meet a black person, they have gray hair, they remember a time they weren't allowed to use a certain toilet. So give them a little, you know, time to be cranky. And by the way, white people have our own thing that we, yeah. stuff that we went sure, through. Sure, sure. That, that hurt us that we have to cope with. Like when they took our slaves away. That was really hard for us. And we're still, so it's pretty even. <laughs> so, it's, so it's even. Yeah. Seriously, because I did a show where they don't applaud when you go on stage. It's called uh, Mo Beta Mondays. At, um, that's the name of the show at the Improv, Mo Beta Mondays. It's an all-black audience. And I had done a show called Chocolate Sundays at the Laugh Factory, which is an all-black audience. And they invited me because they thought I was black because of my name because I directed Pootie Tang, so people sometimes think I'm black. And so they invited me to that to the show. So I get there. And uh, they go, oh, hi. <laughs> and then we go, oh, hi. And then we kind of stand there trying to decide, and I go, fuck it, hi. They go, yeah, hi, all right. <laughs> so I went on, and this is Chocolate Sundays at Black Factory, and it was fucking great. I had a great time because nobody else is trying. They're all up there just acting cool, and I went up there and I tried, and everybody appreciated it. So then, because um, most comedians don't try, I'm not saying because they're, they're always black, but they were all black and unfunny. Every single one of them was black. There are far more unfunny white comedians than, un than unfunny black ones, but every single comedian on that show was black and unfunny. Should have been the name of the show. Really. <laughs> But I was white and hilarious, <laughs> and also, you know, privileged and uh, lucky to be white. <laughs> it's awesome. It is a very. It, everybody who's white should just wake up and go, I'm fucking white! This is great! This is great! How easy is this shit? I don't have to fucking explain myself ever. I look people in the eye with confidence, nobody fucks with me. Please protect me. It's the thing is that black people, all they can hope for the cops is that they'll leave them alone. And we actually get to hope that they'll protect us. Fucking a chasm of difference. On the, and I'm on the greatest side of that chasm. I am on the fucking sweet side of that chasm. This guy is hilarious. I couldn't stop laughing. It's the first time I'm checking out his um, comedy. It's so fun <laughs> getting to see different comedies from other countries, you know, from where I come from, Nigeria. And so many things that he said he actually was just sarcasm and all that. And it was just fun, creating fun comedy just to ease people's mind and all that. And I, I, I really like that. It's not to be taken too seriously, you know, just take it easy, have fun and enjoy. I really did enjoy his, co <laughs> his comedy, even from his facial expressions when he's saying those things. You could actually just understand where he's coming from, you know, doing it for fun to get people, get attention out of yourself and feel free and have fun. It's, it's life. We're all one. <laughs> That's how I look at it. Comedy is just there. And I really like how he does his comedy. I'm going to be checking out more from him because it's just so fun, so natural the way he says it. Thank you so much for hanging and checking out this with me. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all in my next video from me. It's bye.